all that before I was making flat shrimp y'all saw that it was recording that's right all right Safeway I don't have my chef coat on I'm not gonna go put it on be all fancy just for this two minute little bit but this is important all right so you guys got thousands of stores all right so the other day I'm on LinkedIn and I'm talking about working at Red Lobster and I had this idea where I go scrub all uh, scrape all the containers out with my bare hand or with uh, gloved hand and we had these, yeah, terrible salad glove hand, but anyways, I'd put it in the thing and we'd save four to six ounces per container. Soon came the million dollar spatula. Wayne Helm saw me do it, all right? That was a million dollar spatula. Next thing I did was um, I started uh, implementation of uh, costing food that I was taking, which you're already doing, that you're giving to somebody and you write it off on your books, right? And I started doing that in Olive Garden and a big thing and I take it down to the mission, right? They didn't do it back then. I had to hide it. Then they instituted this. Numbers, numbers, numbers. So you have multiple stores all across the nation, okay? You have seafood in each and every one of these stores. You have good product most of the time. 85% of the time, the food that I go shop for, all right, is good product in your store. Now, here's where the mess up is. You got seafood guys, all right, who don't know how to work with seafood properly, all right? This is loose frozen, all right, IQF shrimp. You can also get blocked frozen IQF shrimp, okay? You can also get... Um, uh, well, we're just going to talk about raw. These are tiger shrimp. There's different kinds of shrimp. The way to thaw this, all right, to thaw it, to cook it, is to use cold water until it's thawed, completely flexible. If you're selling it, you want the extra 12 hours. Listen to me. I'm going to save your corporation so much money. The extra 12 hours. Deglaze only, only the outside seawater. See that? Just deglaze that real quick. All right? Now, one, your customers won't feel like they're being ripped off. Two, you get an extra 12 hours out of your products. Three, I don't ever want to buy shrimp from you again where the, the pink, it was pink on the outside. I'm like, that's funny looking shrimp. You know? I'm like, pink shell, but the meat looked good. And I'm like, in good price for jumbo shrimp. The dude did it in hot water, man. That ain't cool. I'm all up in your face. I'm so sorry. Back up. Excuse me, Vic. I was filming down below. I was making fried shrimp. Really? <laughs> Look, <laughs> I ain't lying. <laughs> fried shrimp right there. That's why I'm having this conversation. Now, also, so now I've given you that one. Reason why, look, anytime I can give an idea as a chef to a corporation, to a person, to anybody that is going to better the guild and better the whole culinary world and the field means that you guys aren't going to throw away as much shrimp now. All right? Now I'm going to give you number two. This is how you handle your seafood. All right? Seafood needs to be kept at 32 degrees. Not 34 not 38, not 40, 32 degrees. The only way to maintain shrimp or uh, seafood, fresh fish that you put in your case at 32 degrees is to put ice packs with holes in it and a drain system. You must have working cold ice on top of your fish at all times and remove the warm drain water from below. Because what happens to warm, it goes up. It goes up into the bottom of the fish. So I'm telling you, you got to keep your fish iced. Iced at 32 degrees. All you got to do is spend the money to buy plastic bags this big that are thick, put hole, or have holes in them, put the ice in there, put it on top of your fish in every single one of your stores, in the back two-thirds of your fish, your thing already tilts down. That means all the cold's going to run down. I don't want to walk in and look at your beautiful seafood that's been sitting there and look at the film on the top of it. Because I know that that window to that fish is a temperature danger zone. And I know that top of that fish layer, if it's been sitting there for two to three days, I don't want it, man. Because it's, it's going to be close, all right? I'm not selling, saying you guys are selling bad product on purpose. I would never say such an accusation. 
What I'm saying is I've been around seafood since 1987. I've been watching what happened to all the front, all the food. I've been at McGrath's. I've been at um, Bish Thompson's. This is a, a, a Bethesda Seafood House. Uh, I've been from Washington, D.C., uh, Chesapeake Bay. I've eaten Boston seafood. I've eaten Red Lobster and worked in several different stores. They got all their fish flying tigers. They used to maintain their fish integrity for up to two weeks. And that's because I did all the fish cutting. I maintained all their fish product. And, um, look, I'm just going to do a couple more of these a few times. They got kind of thick fire with them. Um, with, uh, here, I'm going to go back down here. Anyway, so those ideas right there, I give them to you because um, what we can do that's better for um, food and all for everybody. Yeah. Oh, and Red Lobster, I, I, I got ideas for you too. I had ideas for you years ago. You're going to have to basically do a Ray Kroc when they got accused of somebody took some picture of some meat grinding and it had a caraway seed in it, right? And they said, worms, right? So Ray goes up there. And I was actually working with a marketing guy who was working with Ray Kroc on this, right? And he walks in there and he's like, Ray, you know, just what's the truth? He said, I buy my meat at a dollar four pound. It was way back in the day, long, long time ago, back in the 60s or 50s, something like that. And uh, early 70s, I don't know. Um, I guess it'd have to be 60s to early 70s. Ray Kroc wasn't around too much before that. But and and a, and a giant. So, anyways, he told him the truth, man. Um, he paid a dollar four a pound, and worms cost a dollar sixty-seven a pound, and it just wasn't cost efficient. He uses beef. Red Lobster needs to do the same thing. Red Lobster needs to say we've um, done some overfishing in the world, and we're going to step to the plate, and we're going to really work with foundations that are starting to repopulate the sea and we're going to change our menu and we're going to change our menu in a way that's going to um, not just show the beauty of seafood but it's going to give you the history of red lobster we're going to bring back the hush puppy we're going to give you the biscuits um, but there ain't nothing like the hush puppy machine to make a real good hush puppies, man. It's a talent, dude. And oh, 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 um, and red lobster fry box. Okay, up here is the scallops, and then the popcorn shrimp, the round shrimp, um, the Cajun shrimp if they're there, flat shrimp, and then you go down and you hit the first Neptune's down there. It's the uh, uh. Admiral's at the bottom. I'll get back to it. I'll cook. I'm going to go cook. I'm trying to do the fry box and cook at the same time and give you good advice. Stick to one corporation at a time. So Safeway, that's how Red Lobster did it. That's how Darden Restaurants did it. That's how General Mills did it. That's how Flying Tigers did it. That's how they had their best, best. Oh, I mean, grouper, I could, and I had big fish like this, man, and a huge fish and thick. So I could take a cut like this and put a J through it and then open it twice and make a butterfly and like trees and flowers with the meat on the inside with using knife cuts. Oh, it's just, man. And we fished all those fish to gone. So there we are looking at the shrimp and we're going to get down to business.